clay. Yes. I'm in this dark alley here. Oh, God. I don't, don't know how I... You near you, do you? I don't know how I got here. Oh, shit. Shit, I'm scared for you. Do you need me to call 911? What is the number for 911? <laughs> if you're dyslexic, it's 11-9. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Call 11-9 right now. <laughs> so scared. I don't know how I got in this dank alleyway. But I'm Ooh, here. I'm going to make the best of it. It looks like this nice trash can is right here. So it's re relatively new looking. Uh, I wonder what they got in it. Hopefully yeah, check, 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 check it out for, uh, you know, there may be some, uh, you know, raccoon food in there. Some apple cores, some... Uh, some cartoonish skeleton, fish skeletons, yeah. whole fish skeletons. Yeah, there's a guy's head in there, but it's just like got the eyes kind of crossed. Like, oh, eh. it's, it's like yeah, a cartoon that's kinda, head. That's whimsical murder. Very whimsical. Whimsical uh, murder, everybody. <laughs> Speaking of whimsical murder, welcome, everybody, to Cinematic Suffering. Hello, hello. We missed you all. We missed you terribly. We did. We missed you terribly. Uh, I am one of the hosts, Jason, and that is another host. Right I'm Cla, or Clay, as they say here in, in the States. Yeah, in, in France, they say Cla. Ooh, Cla. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, before I jump into that, geez, I don't know where that stuttering fit came from. Uh, guys, we're, we're going to be talking about Terrifier and not just ter the new Terrifier. We're going to be talking probably about the whole series and maybe a little bit uh, more in-depth stuff about it. But before we do, uh, let's go ahead and hit that like button, hit that follow button. If you're listening to this on Spotify, go ahead and hit a five star. We want you to do that now because you may, if you're a fan of Terrifier, you may not be pleased with the outcome of this video. <laughs> Depending on how Depending. you feel about the terrifier, right? Yes, exactly. I mean it's it's a horror movie podcast, so why wouldn't we talk about the most annoyingly popular movie in theaters and in popular culture? Uh, that would be the uh, the terrifier films, uh, starring the the enigmatic and murderous Art the Clown. Oh yes, so this is a, a, a creation of a, an effects artist by the name of Damien Leone. Damien and Leone. He came out uh, with a, a a short film, I think around 2008, called The Ninth Circle. Correct. And, and uh, The Ninth Circle kind of, uh, in fact, The Terrifier 3 kind of kind of dips back into The Ninth Circle, which I thought was pretty cool. And we'll get into Terrifier 3, but there's some things. Okay, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the the the. It, it does dip back into that, which was really cool. And and then after that, we have All Hallows Eve, which is just kind of like a bunch of short stories involving Art the Clown doing God knows what to who knows who, uh, everything and all sorts and in between. Yeah, it's a uh, he's the, the clown has gone through some transformations during his journey to uh, mainstream popularity, baffling mainstream popularity. We'll get into that also. Yeah, so uh, I guess I guess would uh, how should we start this, uh, Clay? What was your first introduction to Terrify or to Art the Clown? And stuff? I my first introduction to Art the Clown was the movie Terrifier, not the short, but the movie. I was um, when it came to Netflix, I watched it. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it you know the obvious uh, scene that everybody references that kind of I think that kind of catapulted. Terrifier into whole other realm was the the scene. You guys yeah. know the scene. Well, um, let, let's let's go and stop you there and just say yeah. this is going to be full of spoilers. So we'll put that up yeah. front here. This is not just a review. This is not going to be spoiler free. So yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen the yeah. films yet, then you know, uh, then you wouldn't be watching this anyway. So right. it's going to be full to the gills with spoilers. Uh, just yeah. There so, you go. but what one of the best kills? Uh, in a long time, uh, was that terrifier scene of the girl getting sawed in half, um, straight down the middle, and yes. from between her legs straight through, and that, that's a reference to an old uh, medieval way of torture and killing that they used to do to prisoners or whoever. And there's like a woodcut of it that uh, I've seen before of them oh. using this same method, and it's pretty gruesome. So that that's what it re reminded me of when I first saw it. I was like, oh yeah, that's they're they take an homage, and it's an homage back to medieval brutality. Yes, and it's something that Damien Leone is uh, is good at. It's it's uh, 
he's put on to film the kind of conversation that gore hounds and horror fiends like us have in private for years just trying to one up one another and start the conversation by saying wouldn't it be messed up if a b and c happened yeah. and i think uh the thing that's interesting about the terrifier films is that they go straight for the jugular and the fact that it it kind of uh navigates right around all of those you know, kind of rules of thumb, like yeah. kids. And uh, if you're going to cut somebody in half, you start at the head, obviously, because why would you do it the other way? That would be horrific. No one would want to watch that. And right. uh, no one would definitely want to watch a protected scene where they see and experience every gruesome yeah. moment of the uh, having. Yeah. And that, that was definitely a favorite part. Um, I, I would say that when my first experience was All Hallows Eve, uh, I did see it. It was streaming somewhere, and I saw it. And I think I just saw it out of boredom. There was no real interest. I, I, it was just one of those things. And I, I, I remember several scenes from it to include, like, art um, trying to come through a television ring style. And there, it, 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 there's different ways he was killing and interacting with people throughout the movie that I didn't think of much at the time. I was like, these are little short vignettes. Yeah. You know, what, what are you going to do? A piece them together. And then I did go back eventually and watch the ninth circle, which is bonkers as fuck, but it, it had a certain charm about it. it, it oh, had yeah. A, yeah. It had like, you know, art. They were giving him somewhat of a background in that, uh, in that short so you kind of see where it looks like they were going with uh but it later feels like they kind of dropped it with all hallows eve and terrifier and so eventually i did see terrifier in i, I think i did see it in the theater and I, I enjoyed it uh i enjoyed those first three the 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 short the all hallows eve and i didn't terrify i enjoyed them on a standalone basis because yeah. you know especially terrifier because that's the real beginning i think of the the moniker or the current modern day art the clown that we see and i feel that it was a good standalone movie there wasn't much of a plot we don't know who art is he's just yeah we don't know if he's human we don't know if he's a monster he's just killing and i I'm fine with that. I'm fine to turn my brain off and watch that shit. <laughs> well, and that's, I, that was one of the charms of the, the original Terrifier movie is that it had that, uh, that grindhouse charm about it. And, um, you know, I got the idea and it, the subsequent movies have only reaffirmed this for me, that it was much more about what's up on screen and the audience kind of um you know like the experience the audience experience more than deep lore the more that he tries to kind of shoehorn reasons into all this stuff the right. more it kind of falls apart it's like okay you you made this up for the benefit of this movie like yeah. i i think that the i think art's uh invincibility is something that's it's almost an afterthought like he, he's he has to explain it. And, and um, I don't know. The Terrifier films are interesting in the way that they're very much fan films. The fan base feels a, like a really big part of it because it wouldn't exist literally without the fans. Right. Like uh, they, they paid their ticket money before the film was even shot. Like it had that kind of um, that it, it had that kind of arc. It, it, it wouldn't exist without a big portion of it was crowdfunded. And yeah some private investors it's an indie movie but it wouldn't exist without the fan base and i think that in that context they damien leone has to listen to the fans a little bit more than other filmmakers do so yeah uh that uh, our criticisms get right to the guy <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so uh, beginning with the, the terrifier i mean let, let me I mean, I'm going to rip into it because uh, anyone who's listened to Cinematic Suffering or me talk in person about horror movies in general will know that I've quipped on Art the Clown pretty much through almost a, not every one of our movie reviews, but we've I've I've done callbacks to Art the Clown in my main, <laughs> every time. And my main callback was that you know Art the Clown to me always felt like you know by the time Terrifier two rounded the corner, I thought we'd see more of a story evolve out of you know who is art the clown what are his motivations uh who, who is behind his powers um why is he dressed like this um the, you know just some certain who's wise wins yeah. um I, I i i always compared it to 
you know, Friday the 13th or, or Nightmare on Elm Street. These, these or Chucky, it's or Child's Play. They, these movies all have uh, villains who have a background. They have motivations. Yeah, I know they're sometimes they're goofy. They're off the wall. Sometimes they just fly off the rails from canon altogether. But at yeah. least there's a basis there. To me, uh, Art, he starts off, like I said, that first Terrifier as a standalone, I can take it. It's great. I think it's fine. But if you're going to do another movie, you need to not just improve on those kills. You need to improve on the character um, that you're presenting. Uh, well, and I went into him because, you know, I rewatched all all the films in uh, in less than a week. And I don't recommend watching them kind of one after another. I mean, because by the time I got to the third one, it was just <laughs> because that third movie is just off the rails I, I i will repeat myself way more than i want to i cannot believe that this movie is is gained mainstream popularity yeah and, and i'll hit on uh like remind me to get back to the idea of uh gatekeeping that's kind of my take with all this but we'll we'll get into that like towards the end of this but okay. um uh, you know like when you <laughs> It's the thing that annoyed me about Freddy. Freddy was a real big part of our childhood. That was kind of our, he was, he was, he and Jason were kind of the <coughs> horror movie staples when we were kids. And the thing that was frustrating about Freddy is that nothing could kill him. If you have a character that lives in people's uh, collective consciousness, there's no way to kill him because he's a phantom to begin with. And you know, Art the Clown is a, is a physical entity, but he's, <laughs> he makes the Terminator look like a, a pest. I mean, the Terminator is is way more based in some kind of fathomable reality than Art the Clown. In the first movie, he blows his brains out right back from the dead. In the right. second movie, he gets his, he gets decapitated, and then he's his head is birthed in this weird post credit scene, and then it goes on to, to have this weird umbilical cord, and he can and the body can walk around Sand's head. It just it, there's it, it, every and the film, visuals are the visuals are cool. I mean, oh, it's I, a, they're amazing. It's yeah, they're what amazing. Propels the movies, but character wise, story wise, it, it's doesn't make any fucking sense no it's asking a lot of the audience and especially and, you know it's like we're not going to say anything that other people haven't yeah. uh you know kind of haven't criticized the movie about is the length the the running time of the second one it was like he put every every moment that was filmed yeah. up on the screen and a movie like terrifier it needs to move quickly and that thing it, it it seemed to stall out every time that they had uh some kind of some bit of exposition i still enjoyed it because sienna is was such a charming character so she yeah. but it's asking a it's asking a lot of, of her to 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 carry this movie on her shoulders yeah. when art's not in the frame killing people it's yeah. it's mostly about her and again she is charming she is and yeah the actress that played her which uh, i forget levy uh sorry it was uh lauren uh lavera who was is yeah. fantastic but but uh going back to the the powers of art uh let mm -hmm. me just say that i think the concept of art is great you know uh I, i'm not sure if i'm too big on killer clowns they never clowns never really scared me it was never really my thing um but i like the concept of them i, I think i would like the concept of them as just being like this weird hobo clown killer dragging this bag of uh murderous weapons around him as a yeah. plain human that would be frightening as hell um but we, we're listing his powers okay so i've got a list i actually made a list you ready okay yeah okay. yeah okay so he's just purely immortal i think we can put that down he can be reborn come back to life after losing vital limbs or shot he can be stabbed in critical areas of the body um leone did state that uh, art was surprised that he did come back to life in terrifier 2 um i didn't get that impression uh but that's what leone states that in terrifier 2 when he yeah. art does come back to life it, he says he's surprised so i didn't get that impression okay um uh let's see he could enter influence dreams he can warp reality think freddy krueger on steroids yeah uh he can manipulate electricity and technology he can enter homes through televisions like samara on the ring 
<laughs> uh, he's got teleportation and some kind of interdimensional travel, the ability to appear any and everywhere and can open a rift into a hellish dimension. Yet, oddly, he seems to be stopped by doors at times. <laughs> uh, if he can teleport, how do doors stop him? It's 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 it, it boggles the mind. He's got superhuman strength. He's got the ability to tear limbs off people and throw them around like, like rag dolls. And uh, <laughs> he's, yeah, yeah, he can imitate people's voices and shape shift. So I mean, these are all these when are all. When did he shape shift? Yeah. Was that in the first one, the very um, very first one? It, it it it's probably stems from Hallow's Eve. I I did get this from somewhere. <laughs> I'm from <laughs> my, my memory, pretty much. But uh, he if not shape shift, at least ch change his voice, uh, or at least the pale little girl can change her voice, um, which we can get to uh, her later as well. So it, he he's got all the this is probably this is just probably just a short list of everything that he can do. Yeah, now he's overpowered. Now can you list any of his weaknesses? Well I mean they they have I mean doors this, other than doors. Um the kind of scattershot bit of lore that they injected into the third movie suggested that he needs an anchor being in this world for his powers. And so one would assume that without Vicky since she was melted into a puddle of goo at the end of the third one, that he's now bereft of powers. That's, that's what we would assume. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't get that from my, from watching it. I had, actually and I more... haven't either. I, I got that from other YouTubers. Yeah, and me too. I, like, I mean, cause he got his throat cut and he's hanging around the bus getting ready to, you know, kind of uh, yeah. murder somebody at the end of the, of the, of the third one. Yeah, which so, is the heart that would that was the harken back to the ninth circle um, short, um, but yeah, I mean the, the that was I didn't know I was trying to wrap my head around it, and really with Terrifier three, I appreciated what they were trying to do. You know, uh, that's what made me enjoy Terrifier three more than two was that it felt like they put uh, Leone put some effort into art and this backstory of. You know, we don't get that much, but we get that link kind of talking about, you know, I, I think it was suggested that the pale girl from two it has possessed Vicky and that's who's talking. That demon who possessed the pale girl from two is now in Vicky and Vicky wants to transfer out of that grotesque body now, Vicky pale girl into Sienna, uh, but she can't do it for reasons. Um, uh, yeah, so, so, it's, so it's it's convoluted. I know, Freddie, Jason, everything, all that shit's convoluted too. But I really appreciated the effort they're trying to do with three. Um. Well, and it's it's impossible to go back and retcon this stuff. But it would have been it would have been awesome if we get if we got little snippets of lore. Like we don't have to be spoon fed at all. We don't even have to really get any confirmation of it. It would have been just cool if there was maybe you know kind of a uh, you know little prologue between each movie. Like maybe that bookends each movie that gives you just a little snippet of the why of it and the rules make sense. It's one of the things that was so fun about the sub substance is yeah. it made the rules made sense they weren't realistic by any means but they th there were rules it was like okay uh, um you know this is the stuff you have to take it on this to this day if you mess yeah. this up then that's where the horror comes in and you know even with something like the evil dead like if you go all the way back to the original evil dead it was kind of a you know like it was almost charming in the fact that it was flawed in the ways that it was you know yeah. like uh, the the um kind of uh like the premise of it was pretty simple but it still had rules it was like okay the yeah. the, the thing that manifests the demons is the thing that you also need to banish them and it, it it's yeah like terrifier at its heart is, and I know this is kind of a weird statement considering how over the top gratuitously gory it is. It's basically a superhero movie. You've got yeah. a, a super powered villain versus a, a progressively more super powered, uh, you know, protagonist. Uh, protagonist yeah. yeah. And so it's, a, it's basically a superhero movie. And the thing that I've never liked about Superman and art is pretty much almost as powerful as him is, is that there's, he doesn't have a kryptonite that I've seen yeah. so far. He's just every movie kind of begins and ends at the same spot. Well, it, yeah, it begins where it starts, where like okay, yeah. he's alive again and he's 
you're gonna kill everybody again. Yeah, and I think they're trying to establish that 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 link. Um, once Vicky dies in Terrifier three, that once she dies, now he's suddenly vulnerable. Um, which is uh, which is you know I don't know if that's what they're going for as a weakness because I don't know if that throws off Terrifier two and how he dies in Terrifier two. Well, I mean, I can already anticipate what the finale of Terrifier 4 is going to be. I think it's going to be him and Siona uh, just chopping each other to gory giblets, but they're both still yeah. just going at one another. And just yeah. it, that's that's going to be, mark my words, that's going to be the, the climax of that movie is both of them yeah. as torsos just biting each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I, 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 I love uh sienna's uh growth that you know we and we we kind of e- even though it's kind of hokey we know there's like some kind of good and evil now in, in this world building that they're trying to do that it, it there is some spiritual literal black and white black versus white kind of evil versus uh good kind of thing because sienna's not you know I, she's she doesn't have too much gray area uh when you come to her character design no, or she's She's kind of um, like creative writing 101 as far as a character. It's uh, honestly the what what drives these movies is the execution and the you know like the visual style, the the music and sound design is great, and the performances and you know the obvious one is is the gore. I mean that's what yeah. people, you know, and it always kind of bugs me when people say, oh, I only go to see movies like you know kind of these big budget effects movies for the special effects or i only go to see horror movies for the gore but yeah. that's that's myopic as hell no yeah. you don't like there's got to be something that there's got to be more to it and i know on some level that there's more to art the clown because he has been in and it's not just because of his influence in popular culture or, or that i've been that he's been all over my youtube feed because you know, yeah. I've been doing research for, for our conversation here. Like after I watched that third movie and before that I had seen the second one and even leading up to right now, like art has been in my head a lot and I yeah. don't quite get it because there's not conceptually, there's not a hell of a lot there. There's not much to him, but he's been, he is, he's had a, a little like room in my brain and that's, that that's got to be kind of part of the cultures. There's some reason that art, the clown is so kind of popular in, in popular culture right now. And it's, it's baffling, but it's also interesting. Too. Yeah. I, I feel the same way that, you know, art, the clown has always been in the back of my mind more, more, more or less in a, a surly kind of uh, uh sneering way, not into uh, any kind of praise. It's just, and I don't know if it's a, it, it, it's not gatekeeping per se. I don't care what you like. And if you like uh, art, the clown, that's fine. Um, to me in the beginning, at least he was an empty suit. He, yeah. he, he was all face, all, 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 all bite, but no bark kind of thing. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's a weird analogy. I know, but, he had nothing going for him as far as a story goes, you know, so it, in like, fact, uh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to, I, I feel like yeah. I cut you off, but I feel like, I mean, I, I feel like I'm surprised that he hasn't been done before. It's such a, and this is no insult to Damien Leone. Cause I, I do love the terrifier movies in, in a way, not like he's going to give a shit anyway, but, um, <laughs> You know, I can't believe that he's the first one that got here. I mean, there's got to be another killer mime movie. It's it's like it's so it's such a an obvious collective of yeah. um you know of tropes that I can't believe somebody hasn't done it yet. It's like when you discover the band Lucifer. It's like you can't be the only Lucifer. You're there's right. got to be like how how do you how did you how was the name available it's that kind of thing like it's so fucking obvious and no yeah. one likes clowns especially said gacy did that that's that's what put that in everybody's collective hive mind was was john wayne gacy yeah and um you know what he doesn't talk and he's got this buster keaton mr bean kind of uh like you know yeah. charm to him but he also does horrific things it's the fucking it's the most obvious shit ever like how did how does he yeah, i was damien leone the first guy to do this it's it's kind of baffling 
yeah i don't i don't know and it, it feels like you know even though this has been a, a work that's been out for years now since i guess since 2008 2009 um that it's just kind of built and built over time uh, i don't know where he got it from i i i think maybe at the time the clown thing was really popular uh, you remember there were like clowns in the street, you know, you know, our darkened streets. There'd just be like people dressed up as clowns holding and the ring, the the advent of ring doorbells kind of yeah. popularized the whole killer clown killer clowns from outer space was, yeah. a, you know, like a movie back in the day. They've always they've always kind of been in the collective id. They have, they have. And I, I think maybe he was just kind of playing off that at, at the beginning. Uh, to me, it'd be great if, you know, Terrifier 3, they move out, you know, maybe still keep that clown aesthetic a little bit with the makeup, but maybe make something a little bit more demonic. I don't know, some actual cool horns or some shit coming out you make him look like a demon but still keep the kind of cool makeup and everything i don't know i'm just no one's gonna do that but that's just me well i you know it seems like that's what he's trying to become in in a weird way it's it's uh yeah. you know a movie that that people shit on way too much it's that that i consider kind of a classic was uh the freddy versus jason like remember in the beginning yeah. in the kind of preamble of that movie freddy was in hell and he looked like a demon like he yeah. had actual like face appliances that were uh demonic and um, pointy ears and shit like that yeah yeah and it, it's it seems obvious that art is you know kind of a serial killer turned uh demon like whatever whatever force is keeping him going is is obviously otherworldly i i I get the feeling that dean me and leone doesn't even like that he's being kind of almost gently coerced into creating any kind of reason or backstory for it i think if he had his druthers there would be no it would be all just spectacle and it would be all i mean that's what it feels like to me yeah yeah like the guy at heart is a special effects guy and and you know he's created the kind of movies that that special effects guys make like um it's 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 no accident that tom savini it has a guest spot in terrifier 3 aside from the fact that everybody that does grotesque over the top movies owes yeah. just clint howard about. was in it it's, that was a nice oh, cl- <laughs> that was i mean this this yeah like there's you know, there's a lot to love about the Terrifier movies. It probably sounds like we're being negative about it. There's a yeah. lot that I do love about it. Um, but, you know, I, I think that if he had his way, that that we wouldn't even have to, to have any kind of backstory or reasons for it. I think that he just wants to kind of, uh, you know, make a a beautifully gruesome visual spectacle yeah. but the fans are kind of demanding like hey why can't we kill this clown <laughs> yeah no that's a, that's a good that's a, you, i think you nailed it on the head there with you know yeah he's he wants to create that spectacle and doesn't want yeah i mean maybe he wants to have some of a story I, I i just don't we don't know what's in his head um i will say terrifier three um i think what i one of the things I really enjoyed of there's a couple of things I really enjoyed about it um, was the character of Vicky and how yeah. she upstaged art in my oh, yeah. opinion, where she was diabolical. She was, I mean, art's evil, no doubt, but Vicky, I mean, having a, a finally having a killer that has a voice and yeah. she's and her makeup effects are so fucking gruesome and awesome. And, and she has, an, she has an origin story yeah uh, we know where she came from we know why she's kind of still there and yeah the, her br- acts of brutality and then oh, in the background art's just like mm, yeah oh, like, doing this doing shit. i'm like dude <laughs> just can you fucking throw him in the pit and just keep vicky around because <laughs> i would have loved to seen a, a spinoff of vicky or maybe vicky takes over you know, I know uh, art. It, I know art will never go away. I know, but that's just in my dreams. That you know, it's after- it's really. I wonder if the Terrifier is going to become kind of the John Wick of uh, of the horror movies in a way, like to where there's this almost. It's almost like the Terrifier universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the Damien Leone universe. And the yeah. thing, like, as much as I like, and I do like them, I did really enjoy them. I'm, I, I, I watched them too close together. That's just, it's just too much. It's like eating, yeah. 
uh, Captain Crunch every day of the week. You know, right. it's just too much. But mouth um, bleeding from being yeah, it's like <laughs> I think that the way to 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 enjoy the Terrifier movies is to have them spaced out for the amount of time that it takes them to make a new one because it's just it's a little bit too much. And I'm not being squeamish or or weak about it. Like I think that the uh, I think it's funny in a way that. Uh, I, you know, like I miss some emotions. I think it's funny in a way that that there's a bunch of normies in the going into the theaters, passing out, puking, and seeing this this movie because they're they're not like us. They haven't in they haven't just kind of swamped themselves in, yeah. in the most just like irreverent, just <laughs> horrific <laughs> horror movies that that exist. So. It, it was all fun and it was kind of like there was a couple times where you might go like this but for horror fans like us it's nothing we haven't seen before i mean it's just yeah and you know what's odd is i know i'm kind of all over the place but ah, fuck it it's our podcast <laughs> um you know people are so grossed out about the uh, these protracted gore scenes but for me the more that they show the more i'm like that's rubber you're showing me that now yeah now, yeah now he's just playing with his food it's just <laughs> Like he's just like you you can almost see the strings more the longer the scene goes on because yeah. it's like okay you hit the the plastic head once it, it, and that's enough time for you to maybe turn away but you do it two or three more times you see how rubbery it is it's, yeah it's, yeah and as good as the special effects are it's they're obviously special effects and um especially considering the way Dame, damian leone frames a shot it's all right there in camera yep. it's all well lit so you're very you see the strings when it comes to to, to the practical effects yeah and uh the, i that's such a standout i remember our theater my theater because you know we, we we saw it on the tail end probably as it's heading out of theaters now yeah. um so there wasn't a lot of people in the theater i was at uh, there were literally two old ladies sitting in the front row. Like and, you fucked up. <laughs> and uh, my partner and I were like, we're we're just laughing. We're, we got to see where this is going. You know, yeah. we're going to watch the movie. We're going to watch these old ladies down here, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so as the, the, the first kill scene came up, I, I think. I think it's Chris Jericho. No, no, no. It's the two guys. I can't remember. The, oh, I know Chris Jericho gets killed near the beginning. Uh, right like in the, the beginning. Uh, right in the beginning so when they stripped his face off and did all that cool stuff that was which was a really cool red uh scene uh both my partner and i looked at each other and we heard they don't take us they took his face off <laughs> <laughs> they don't take the face off they don't take his face off and uh, we just started <laughs> busting out laughing and and then like about a quarter of the way through the movie the 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 two old ladies are still talking you know they're we're, we're not interested we don't care if people are talking in the theater but especially when there's not that many people but they're making yeah. comments like they're low, uh siskel and the ebert down there just <laughs> making comments well that was pretty bad what the yeah yeah he really took that uh tr really took that chainsaw to that girl too <laughs> and <laughs> that made me hornier in hell and uh we we finally said i think they are here on purpose they know exactly what they're getting oh into they it. seek out stuff like yeah that. and i was like i was just thinking to myself i hope we're like that i know we're gonna be like that when, when oh we're that. yeah just i mean just like <laughs> well I, uh yeah well that's a different movie but uh, it's uh, like um my experience in the theater was uh there weren't very many people in there the the town i live in people just don't go to see horror movies here that much and it, it's kind of annoying um because it's the type of movie that you kind of want to experience with a crowd um i did have uh i did sit next to a couple for a moment and um you know the, before the movie i was like have you all seen the other two and the guy said um she drugged me to this i don't <laughs> like horror movies oh, and i no. said I, she probably warned you but you know this is going to be way over the top right and she he's like yeah okay I, I i can deal with it i'm like all right and so i kind of moved to a different spot in the theater to give them some uh you know some space in case yeah. he projectile vomited all <laughs> over the place and i saw these two kids they had obviously come in um you know to see transformers one or whatever uh animated movie was playing and then yeah. stuck into terrifier <laughs> and they came in and i i had never seen two people leave a theater quicker and I, 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 I turned around and made eye contact with these two kids as they were leaving. And the, the look on this kid's face was just abject horror. Like they were just 
totally the kid, traumatized. The kids left, not the couple. Or? The, the kids, yeah. The kids. The, the, kids the couple was there to stay. The kids. Okay. The the girl was obviously a, a gore hound, and the guy likes having sex with the girl, so that he <laughs> he stuck it out. He didn't want to look like a total pussy. But but I, I, I wonder which scene uh, was it? The Vicky masturbating with. The... <laughs> no, it was it was one of the scenes where somebody's just getting turned yeah. into to to human hamburger, and I mean, and like I said, this is the for gore hounds. Like it's basically basically it's it, the the terrifier films when you if you're just going to focus on the gore it's almost like a super cut it's almost like a compilation of everybody's favorite gore scenes all in yeah. one movie and protracted to the point to where because it's like the uh the chainsaw scene the rat scene at the end is the the one that probably really kind of made people up chuck in their pampers but um yeah you know, I just laughed at it because it's just, and it's I heard, the top. Yeah. yeah, and I heard that that's the one that that kind of skeeved out the actor David Howard Thornton that played Art that he doesn't like rats, so of course they oh, put yeah. in a rat fortune. But it's just, <laughs> I, yeah, I, you just, I don't know. Like I can't take any of this stuff that seriously because yeah. you know that it's not real. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. there's nothing like the whole movie takes place in this kind of alternate reality it's just not yeah. you know and, and you know the, as much as uh i complain about you know backstory and uh yeah. having a motivation and it, it's like i'm still paying money to see these films so it's not like they're they're missing or they're they're not profiting at all off of my opinions so it's it, they're, they're gonna do what they want uh, i would just like to see something a little bit more coherent and for but you know we're it's not going to happen and I'll still pay to go see it in the theaters. <laughs> well, and it's one of, and it, it's kind of one of these things, like there was no one around to kind of, um, you know, uh, it, it, it's one of the pitfalls of these auteur films where there's no one around to give a whole lot of creative input on the writing process. I don't know that it probably wasn't available. And I don't know that somebody like Damien Leone would want to, really would be all that receptive to it if he got it but it, it's what happens when there's not other input to, to the story like it would have benefited by somebody to to come in and be like oh no no okay let, let's come up with an or let's let's conceptualize this in a way that's assuming that that, that he's going to be as popular as freddie let's come up with a beginning middle and end yeah. for his entire arc let's come up with a reason for it let's come up with a uh boss baddie the the person that's that's you know kind of orchestrating all this yeah. whether it be satan or one of his lesser demons it's gotta you know there and what's the rules for it what are the you know what's the world yeah. building like uh what 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 makes him move and what makes him what's his achilles heel and yeah and that kind of thing yeah it, it seems obvious but you know i i and also don't don't develop a uh if you want art to be the center of attention don't develop a better villain than him um, oh, Vicky totally upstaged him. She Vicky, was I mean, uh, art was literally Vicky's lackey um, as yeah. the movie progressed, and it, it, it was refreshing. I that was literally the reason I started enjoying the film a lot more, because you know you can only take uh, to me uh, the miming. Uh, it, like I said, is it Art the clown or should be Art the mime? But it, kind it, of, yeah, Art it, the mime, where he doesn't say anything. He just does these wild gestures and. You know, after a while, it's just like, okay, you love killing, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, I, and well, and like um, the, and I realized, like, I, I realized what was bothering me about these movies was, was like, what is bugging me about this? And then I realized that this might seem really weird and gatekeepery, and I, and I've always, had, you know, kind of resented gatekeeper culture, but like when we were kids. And, and, you know, when we were teenagers, liking these kind of movies, liking stuff like Terrifier, because it did exist, it may not have been ex executed with the same, you know, kind of visceral uh, quality, but it did exist. This stuff's been around forever. Liking this kind of stuff, liking Guar, liking Cannibal Corpse, like, because it's basically, it's Cannibal Corpse put up on the screen. It's the same kind yeah. of aesthetic. Liking this kind of stuff kind of ostracized you it alienated you people would laugh at you and now those same asshole normies are in the theater enjoying it and that 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 kind of bugs me in a way yeah. like i don't I, you know i'm glad for the success of the movie and i love seeing independent creators make wildly successful movies and i enjoyed terrifier but it's it's weird this kind of shift that 
that popular culture has taken. It's it's strange to me that this is now kind of acceptable in a yeah. weird way, and it always it, has been. You know, that's a great point. Um, I w- my partner and I were talking about Terrifier three after we watched it. You know, and we're commenting on how much more we enjoyed it because uh, we went in with we went into the movie with very low expectations. And uh, so I guess when your expectations are set so low that coming out, even the mildest plot point that rings with you uh, will elevate it above the previous film. And uh, yeah. uh, it, it still was a, a tedium with the, the film length. It could have been trimmed a couple, maybe about 20 minutes. But yeah, um, easily. But uh, I'm, I'm digressing there. Uh, you, you brought up the popularity of it that, you know, it, it's odd seeing um five-year-old children wearing terrifier art the clown shirts and you know children you know not that i'm a big uh protector of children i'm not i don't give a shit about kids but <laughs> um but you know you know i'm saying that like uh, do the parents understand what their what their kid is wearing and what art the clown does on screen it's or did they let their kids watch this it's well yeah, and 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 I've heard interviews with some of the filmmakers that are like, you know, kids shouldn't watch this, but we know that they're going to. And I see it, it warms my heart to see a lot of kids at these conventions that like Art the Clown. It's like they they really shouldn't. And as as much as I kind of chuckle at people that are repulsed by something that's obviously fake, it's all yeah. it's all corn syrup and latex you're not a bad person if you don't like these, this kind of stuff that right. it's kind of, if it might kind of be the opposite, maybe you just don't like to fill your head with waking nightmares. I mean, for, <laughs> I, I can't speak for all horror fans, but that they're already there for me. That's, it's kind of a catharsis, but if you don't like this stuff and it upsets you, you're not a bad person. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't get to tell me that I can't see it, but at the same time, it's it doesn't make you a bad person if you don't like it so it's it's it, it's wildly popular you know in pop culture that that's kind of baffling to me and i don't know what it says about kind of the times that we're living through yeah. or just maybe you know kind of um you know, people's uh, standards and tastes are changing a little bit. Maybe stuff like Cannibal Corpse and Terrifier and Guar, maybe it really isn't all that aberrant. Maybe it's just, it's, it, it, it just it, kind of is the entertainment that it is. For just people. kind of, it, it, maybe it just plays to human nature. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how ph- philosophical that is. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have made that comparison, the, the popularity of, uh, experiencing such gore to me uh, it's cathartic because i know it's fake um uh, i i know i know what is real i know what i don't like to see i don't like to see real shit i like no. to see fake shit and uh when i know it's fake and over the top i enjoy it um even terrifier as much as i bag on it as you know i still you know you say the same thing like we both still enjoy the series uh, uh taken at face value because it's entertaining to watch but uh why is it so much popular than the joker movie that came out you know it's i don't know i don't know maybe maybe people just need that spectacle to they don't want to get too deep in the weeds with a joker story that has a musical set to it or something it's nothing too dense <laughs> you know maybe, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah yeah maybe popular culture is kind of getting around to the thing that horror fans have known for for years and years since the conception of the medium is that there's a certain kind of uh like exhilaration with watching a movie that that you you know is gonna upset you like i yeah. walked into uh um I like I walked into T- Takashi Miki's audition movie with the same energy and then later on the hostile movies with that yeah. same kind of giddy anticipation then you realize ah it was just that was fun it was dark yeah. it was it was it was basically the dark darkest of humor <laughs> yeah yeah and you know he, he, gore wise those movies i mean are <laughs> they're like uh there's they, there's nothing compared to what T- terrifier does or other movies either hostile no. was really i mean it was a violent movie don't get me wrong but i mean uh, the gore could have been the gore factor could have been amped up tenfold on that yeah what made it work was that it was a buddy movie that went to that took a hard pivot <laughs> yeah and it's 
man, I, I had a thought and it just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. I sorry. That's okay. Here it goes. Uh, gotta squeeze it out. Oh, it's oh! I started myself. <laughs> okay. Now put well. it in your hands and clap. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, what else do we have to say about, uh, I think, um, what well, I, our we, tier to stay, that's, yeah. that's for certain. We know we're going to get at least two more films out of him. Um, you know, I mean, like what, oh. like what's going to happen next? Is this going to be, uh, or is there going to be a whole wave of movies like terrifier or trying to capitalize on that or try yeah. to shock audiences? I kind of doubt it. I think that there's going to, I think that this is a, kind of an odd aberrant yeah you know this might be an aberration expectation sure. yeah. yeah um i i do remember i was talking going to talk about we're talking about you know the spectacle of movies like terrifier and yeah you know, also the the 80s schlock that came through um you start seeing more intellectual films come out of the a24 series which i thoroughly enjoy as well uh, that, oh yeah that you know uh sometimes sitting there and watching those movies and putting thought into it and and realizing the real horror that's being presented you know in the witch or hereditary is is one thing uh but then sitting down to watch a girl being split in half by a saw uh is a whole other level of horror that you can just sit there and watch and not have to think too much about it other than Oh shit, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, did you see that man? You see uh, that man? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah, art art has a talent for turning people in. Like, he, he, basically, people just become paper mache around him, like yeah. that. <laughs> um so like uh i guess if we had any more comments for terrifier three i know we kind of glossed over to one and two but it uh, they don't matter anymore. I, just just <laughs> just visual you know like a visual feast for gore hounds it's fun to watch the performances it's fun to um i can't wait to see more um you know uh like more films starring uh the lead at, like lauren uh, lavera who by you know, side note, did a lot of her own stunts and is is uh, a, a a martial artist. So you know, she kind of helped uh, coordinate a lot of the fight scenes, and that was really her in camera yeah. a lot of times, getting tossed over stuff and her head smashed into fake walls. That's you know cool. that, yeah. that that that's a fun fact. Um, the uh, uh, little fun little bit of trivia is Catherine uh, Corcoran, who was the girl that got sawed in half in the first movie, didn't put enough of the release agent on her skin when they did the full body cast and she nearly had to go to the ER uh, mm -hmm. because when they had to peel that cast off of her, it, it wasn't releasing from her skin. Oh, and it it her was skin. Just, yeah. And they were, they were that close to sending her to the ER. And from what I understand, she never complained once because she knew that that was going to be the scene that everybody talked about. And they said right. that she was just a delight to work with. She, they, she, had to hang upside down with uh blood yeah. dripping into her into her nose and and just yeah. to be kind of uncomfortably exposed like that and from what i've heard she was a total trooper and i liked her in that movie and not not necessarily for that scene but for all the other ones around it she for what little time she had to be in the movie i thought that she gave it a lot of energy and heart yeah. and I, I liked it there's a lot to love about these movies yeah. if you're a horror fan I mean, yeah they're, I, they're, I love seeing the behind the scenes stuff yeah. uh like uh, i i saw several um snippets of terrifier 3 and the behind the scenes stuff and how they did some of the kills and uh and mutilations and i was like wow that is really cool and it looks like the actors are having fun yeah so it, it's I, I know it's probably pretty grueling uh, i'm not going to deny that but uh it looks like it was you know a blast to work on yeah uh, yeah i'd love to be in a movie like that that would yeah be, for sure would be great i mean but so, you know i mean like hopefully it 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 inspires you know, a whole new generation of, of independent filmmakers that are going to make their movie regardless of 
what the you know kind of established structure yeah. says and that's that's the the big thing to love about the terrifier movies is that it exists outside of the hollywood paradigm and it went in there and it dominated this big hollywood movie with all these uh, obnoxious egomaniacs you yeah. know like in in their list actors fucking and, failed yeah. meanwhile art the clown is is dominating at the box office. i yeah. love success stories like i that. do too i do too and it, much as it perplexes us why art is always in our heads maybe this is one of the reasons why it's just that uh it keeps overcoming these goals uh these goal posts that people keep putting out well it can't yeah. do this well it can't do this well yeah. you know and it's like uh, it feels like leone and his crew are continuously pushing that goal post farther and farther out as they keep leaping over it in hurdles and oh yeah shit, you know more power to them um i i like i said i i'll I'll complain as much as I want about the movies, but I'll still pay good hard money to go see it in the theater. And, that's, I mean, know. and that's, that, that's part of the thing. It's part of the, it's, it's a component of being a horror movie fan. And it's a component of being a, a heavy metal fan is that you often viciously criticize the thing that you also love and support. And yeah. I, I love that duality. And that's, that's definitely, uh, you know, there with the terrifier films. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, well, Clay, uh, I guess that may be about it. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, a scene nah. that put out or anything? No, nah, no, nah, uh, I think that I think that about does it, man. I appreciate if if y'all stuck with us. I appreciate it. Um, we we love uh, we love y'all. Yeah, yeah, we dig it. And uh, any anybody who still catch who still who still stays with us through this entire podcast has listened to our other stuff. Thank you so much. We appreciate oh, you uh, being here, um, Clay. I'm going to try to get out of this weird dimension thing. I know uh, it looks like luck. an alleyway. It does look like an alleyway, but I think it's another dimension. I, I see hearing, a planet behind you, maybe. I don't yeah, know. I, I keep hearing strange bumps and things all around me that shouldn't sound. So um, look for a shimmering, shimmering. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I I did have portal. like my, my, my little, uh, I get a little knife here. So I'm going to go out and try to uh, poke holes uh, into anything that tries to stop me from getting out of this dimension. Into the fabric of reality. In well, best fabric. of luck. I hope you join yeah. us soon. I will. Hopefully, I, I'll make it back. And if I do, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a little uh, direct message saying, "Hey, baby, I'm back." Okay. Yeah. Okay, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. This has been Cinematic Suffering Special Edition Episode Terrifier. Terrifier. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have fun, and we'll talk at you guys later. Peace out.